YouTube, what's going on? My name is Corporate Surf, and in today's video, we're bringing a first on my channel. I'm branching outside of tracking to bring you guys some resources for target switching. So with that being said, I wanted to put out my general philosophy for the work that I produce, and it is essentially summed up in this statement. This is a statement I wrote about simplicity, and it's the foundation for how I view aim training and everything that I try to take seriously. I firmly believe one of the greatest vessels of equity is simplicity. Opportunity is boundless when everyone can understand. So the equality of opportunity lies within simplicity, where the foundations to success are known to everyone, and everyone can chase them according to their dreams. No manner of implementation is going to be perfect on this, but that is my approach when creating resources for you guys here on YouTube. So here we go with the Corporate Surf Target Switching Training Method. Emphasis on the word training there. But a fair warning, as I've hinted at earlier, I'm a tracking guy. As you can see on screen, specifically, I'm most interested in precise tracking. In the 2000 hours it took me to be one of the best at smoothness, I refined quite a few approaches to how I tackle each task and how I feel my time is best utilized. Through trial and error, I've tried to maximize my efficiency so that I can hit the highest scores I can on Kovacs. Most of my YouTube resources revolve around helping you get better at the aim trainer, and that's what this video is about. If you're trying to get better at Battlefield or Call of Duty, I think this video can help you, but at the same time, keep in mind my approach is relative to the aim trainer itself. So since my model revolves exclusively around training methods, you should also be aware of foundational techniques that are going to help you when you play my playlists. The first video you should watch and what you should absolutely understand is the concept that a random dead dude puts together in his video how to get Astra in under 10 minutes for Psalm TS. It's a great video on the general philosophy for training target switching, specifically speed switching, but it covers the mindset that you should have when playing the task at hand. The next one is not completely perfect, but I still really like it. It's evasive target switching by RID, by the way. Not every aspect of this video is perfect, but it will provide you with a foundation of how you should approach evasive target switching. And the last one is a recent video by Viscos, which is about tension management and how you should budget your tension relative to the task you're playing. One final note, and I'm sorry for all these prerequisites, the model that I've built this playlist for is based on pentabounce. In terms of the flicking aspect of target switching, pentabounce is not the best. Within my playlist, you will still improve at flicking for target switching, but when you're playing the benchmark itself, flicking is not a huge priority for this. This is not an issue at all, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. The core of what I'm talking about can be applied to both pentabounce and any type of target switching scenario. The reason I chose to build this for pentabounce is because of a recent video where I shared my progression theory on how you should approach getting better at aim. Since pentabounce is the first target switching task I think you should play, I built it for pentabounce. So the core of this method, variable isolation training specific to target switching. There are many variables that you need to consider when accounting for the difficulty of a target switching scenario. I've gone ahead here and narrowed them down to the four most universal and most important variables for you to account for. Listed quickly, they are the speed or the movement profile of the bot, the overall bot count, which is how many bots are spawned into the map, the size of the bot, which is displayed on Kovacs through its radius, and the health or the time to kill for the bot. All right, speed. No, not I show speed. The speed profile of the bot. For speed, obviously, we're going to have a top speed but we'll also have the acceleration of the bot, and then the strafing profile for the bot. This is when it changes directions, how frequent or erratic those strafing mannerisms are. Next up, we have bot count. So the more bots that you have in the scenario, the more it will call for you to practice your chaining. The less bots there are in a scenario, the more it will call for you to practice your flicking. Now with bot size, the larger the bot, the more it will call for you to focus on your speed and fluidity. And then the smaller the bot size, the more it will call for you to emphasize your precision. Finally here with the bot health, a high health bot will call for you to be more tracking dominant. And then a low health bot, again, will have you focusing on your flicking. So I went ahead and built a chart for the flow of targeting these variables when training for switching. I'm gonna zoom in here in a second, but it starts at speed. And then we go to our, our bot count. And then specific to each bot count, we have 30% larger, same size, 30% smaller. And then within each size profile, we have a health value being more health, same health, less health. So factoring for each of these variables across the board, there are 27 unique ways to practice within a speed profile. So I went ahead and designed two playlists based on that philosophy. First on the left is based on Pentabounce Novice. On the right is based on Pentabounce Advanced. You can see within the playlist, we factor first based on size. Then within each size portion, we have bot count. And then within that profile, we factor for health or time to kill. Okay, so that was a ton of information. Why would somebody do something like this? 
Well, first of all, when you isolate your variables, it helps you identify the weak points of your aim. Maybe you're having a lot of trouble with your flicking. This playlist has you covered. You can play when there's four bots and with the bots on low TTK. Maybe you're having trouble with your tracking. You can play the versions where the bot has a higher health count. Isolating our variables helps us tackle our weaknesses. But also playing with this model has other benefits too. When there are 27 different tasks, there are 27 different leaderboards. You have 27 different opportunities to see your personal best score. You play more and more and try and challenge yourself to beat your previous best. The more time you invest in quality training, the better you will be in the long run. So let's talk about what I would recommend for each of these playlists. Looking first at the novice playlist, I would recommend it for players gold to diamond rank. When you play each scenario, I think you should play it twice. If you play each scenario twice, you'll get done in less than an hour. There'll be lots of variety. It'll be a lot of fun for you. Now, going back to why I said you should be gold to diamond for this. If you are lower than gold, you haven't quite hit the fundamentals that you need for this playlist to be beneficial. That's just my personal opinion. If you're lower than gold, I would actually first recommend you check out the Voltaic Daily Improvement Method. This is an aim routine produced by Voltaic members Low Gravity 56 and 4RK. It starts all the way at the bottom with entry level playlists so that new players can get familiar with the aim type and establish foundational skills that are going to carry you into a playlist like mine. Moving right along then to my recommendations for the advanced switching playlist. For this one I would recommend you be between Jade and Grandmaster rank and that you go ahead and play each scenario three times. Playing each scenario three times in the playlist should have you finishing in around 90 minutes. I recommend Jade to Grandmaster for this one because if you're lower than Jade, like your diamond, it might be too difficult, but if you're higher than Grandmaster, you've already hit the fundamentals needed for this playlist, and there are probably better resources for your further development. All that being said, the only thing that really matters is that you're having fun and playing, and that your training is beneficial to you. So if you find that you benefit from playing one of these playlists a different way, go for it. Challenge yourself in the ways that you think will benefit you the most. But all that being said, we've reached the end of this video here. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm almost at 3,000 subscribers somehow. A couple months ago, I was barely at 500. The support you guys have been showing me is amazing, and I really appreciate you all. So whether you care about Call of Duty, Kovacs, or Battlefield, go out there and have fun and get better. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Peace.